Hey Booktube, it's Thea, and this is going to be my June wrap-up. So for the month of June, I read a total of eight things, uh, four graphic novels, three full-length novels, and one novella. Um, most everything was just kind of all right. There was a couple things that I absolutely loved, um, and I'll really quickly kind of go through them in the order that I read them and my kind of thoughts and opinions and then my overall star rating. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that I read in June was Paper Girls Volume 4. I really, really enjoyed this. I enjoyed it a lot more than Volume 3. Um, this is just the continuation of the Paper Girls series. I won't talk too much about this particular volume since it is a um, sequel and I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but basically, if you don't know, Paper Girls follows this group of girls who are about 12, 13, um, and they kind of get wrapped up in time travel and start traveling through time and meeting their future selves. And um, it's really good. It has a lot of like Stranger Things vibes. Um, it kind of takes place in the 80s and follows just really young girls. Um, and there's a lot of diversity and the girls are really great. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed this volume and I gave it four stars. The next thing that I read, I actually listened to as an audiobook, and that's In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. This is the fourth book in the Wayward Children. Children series. This follows Lundy. Lundy as she discovers the Goblin Market. Um, the audiobook was amazing. I listened to this in a matter of like couple hours um, while I was doing my bullet journal for the month. So it was a really fast paced read. Absolutely loved it. It's my favorite in the series and I gave it four and a half stars. Then the the first full length novel that I read in June was The Cool Prince by Holly Black. Um, actually, I technically started this in May, um, and I just wasn't really feeling it, so I put it down, and then I picked it back up. So I read most of this book in June. Um, I'd say I read like three-fourths of it in June. I am really torn, because I know this book is like loved on booktube. Everyone loves this. Um, I personally, for me, just felt it was all right. Um, the first, like... 100, 150 pages was really tough for me to get through. Um, but then once I hit like the second half of the book, I flew through it in a matter of like a day, day and a half. So I'm really torn because I know that a lot of it, it was kind of like a build up for the second book, but the first half was so hard for me to get through. I just didn't love it. Um, but I really enjoyed the second half of the book and I'm really excited to see where the rest of the story goes and the rest of the series. So overall, I'm giving this three and a half stars. Then picked up The Exile, which is the Outlander story and graphic novel from Jamie's point of view by Janet Gabaldon. Uh, this actually is only the first third of Outlander. I was kind of actually disappointed with this. I was really looking forward to this. I love Outlander, love the story. It was kind of exciting to see um, the story from like a new format and a new point of view and a new take on the story as far as you know how the characters look. And um, but this was just kind of all right. I ended up giving this three stars. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Um, there are some turns in here that happen differently than the original novel. Don't know if I am a fan of that or not, but um, I can't really judge it because it's Diana's writing and where she wanted the story to go. Um, I just don't think that I enjoyed this as much as I was anticipating and... Um, I just was kind of underwhelmed, so I'm giving this three stars. I next picked up Melmoth by Sarah Perry. This was actually a pleasant surprise because I really honestly had no idea what this book is about going into it. Um, it's an arc that I won in a Goodreads giveaway back like in October, way before it even came out. Um, and it seemed really, really interesting and kind of like atmospheric and kind of spooky. But other than that, I didn't really know much about it. Um, um, basically, this book follows a kind of a couple different characters. It follows two main characters, um, Helen Franklin and her friend Carol. And Helen Franklin has um, kind of returned back to England. She's working as a translator. Um, and then basically follow, it ha follows the story after Carol, her friend, has found this mysterious letter, which is kind of half a confession and half um, that, that warns of 
the coming of a creature from Melmoth the Witness, who is who is a Grimlet, who is a legend found in fairy tales, and um, is kind of a village lore, basically. And then uh, basically Melmoth tra she travels through the ages, dooming those dooming those she persuaded to join her to a damnation to a damnation of solitude. And unbeknown to Helen, she is being followed and being watched. Um, and then she finds out that Carol disappears. So this is, I don't really know how to describe it other than that. Um, it's really interesting. It's kind of dark. It's atmospheric. Um, it is kind of a fantasy horror, kind of thriller, suspense novel, kind of all wrapped up with a little bit of, bow, with a little bow. Um, I enjoyed this. Um, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's very hard to explain what this book is actually about and kind of what happens. Um, I ended up giving it three and a half stars because it did take a little bit of time to get going. Um, and then once I kind of got through the initial kind of setup, uh, I breezed through that in a couple days. Um, I am really interested to pick up Sarah Perry's other work. I, I did really enjoy her writing style, so I am curious to pick up The Essex Serpent. Um, but this book was just kind of weird, and I just really don't know. I've even had time to think about it, and I still don't really know my thoughts around it. Um, so I'm going to give it a three and a half. So I'm giving it three and a half stars. I next picked up Revival Volume 6, Thy Loyal Sons and Daughters. This is a kind of graphic thriller, uh, suspense graphic novel series that follows this rural town in Michigan and um, kind of the aftermath of what they call Revival Day, where their fans and family and neighbors are coming back to life. And some of them have turned violent, some of them are not, and kind of why some of them are and some of them aren't, and kind of that aftermath. It's just just really graphic, um, really kind of, it's like a graphic noir almost kind of graphic novel series. I've been reading this for quite a while. This is volume six, so I don't really want to go into too much about this particular volume, but I did really enjoy it, um, and I gave it four stars. And then I did happen to read one 2019 release this month, and that was Again But Better by Christine Riccio. Everyone on book two knows what this book is about. I feel like there is a lot of potential I can, you know, for a debut novel. I, f I feel like she has some great potential for future novels, um, and there is some really cute things that I loved in this book. Um, but there were parts that dragged and parts that I didn't like. Um, but I gave it three and a half stars. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. There were some moments that I really enjoyed. Some moments I didn't really care for. Um, and excited to see where Christine's writing uh, career as a writer goes. And I'll pick up her future novels. But for me, this one was just okay. And the last book I actually read is my last graphic novel. And that's called Sleepless by Amy Vaughn. This is something I actually um, hadn't heard of until recently. Kind of started picking up steam and kind of saw it all over my used bookstore and my uh, my local comic book store. And I happened to see it at the library, so I decided to pick it up. This is a just really cute um, fant uh, first volume in a kind of fantasy uh, series. I think there's only two. Maybe there might be a third one. I will just read the back here because uh, it kind of describes it better than I can. It does say, in the kingdom of Harmony, Lady Poppy is kept safe by her faith that by her faithful, sleepless knight Senric. But when a new king is crowned, an assassin targets her, ushering in a dangerous chapter to her life. As Poppy and Senric work to discover who wants her dead, they must navigate the treacherous waters of life at court and of their growing feelings for one another. But the, I really enjoyed this. It features a woman of color as the princess in this world. And um, you get to see her her religion and her culture kind of you know heavily influenced in this. And um, it's got this, she's got this really cute like fox dog companion. Um, this is her sleepless knight who took an oath to protect her. So therefore he doesn't sleep and he's sleepless. Um, I really enjoyed this. I ended up giving it four stars. I liked it a lot more than I was anticipating. Um, I'm really, really excited to pick up volume two and see where the rest of the story goes. But I definitely recommend this if you're 
looking for something kind of independent, if you're looking for something kind of fantasy, if you're looking for a fantasy graphic novel, but um, you aren't really sure where to go, this is a good like introduction. It's kind of YA, kind of middle grade-ish. I could see it kind of going into either one. Um, but I really enjoyed this and I cannot wait to pick up volume two. So here is everything I read in June. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys read in June, if you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them. As always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe to get notified of when I post new videos, if not already. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you are well and happy reading and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.